season of the Mutual Fund Show, we are speaking with some of the biggest names in an industry which has, in a true sense of the term, created wealth for the average Indian. The year 2023 will be marked as a paradigm shift for the mutual fund industry. It is the year when we saw SIPs cross the threshold of 17,000 crores a month. It is the year where the number of accounts and folios opened also crossed new highs. Will we continue to see that kind of wealth creation in SIP. What is the message beyond mutual fund sahi hai? To speak on this, I have a very special guest right here in the NDTV Profit Studios. Please help me welcome Mr. Nilesh Shah, Managing Director at Kotak AMC. Nilesh Bhai, thank you so much for speaking with thank us you today. Thank for having me. And here. coming to our studios, right, uh, you know, as we start off this journey on NDTV Profit, thank you so much for that. Let me... From urban India, we have now become part of semi-urban and rural India. We have miles to go, but the journey has begun. From rich Indians, we have become part and parcel of middle class Indian, and we have to go to bottom of the pyramid. And more importantly, mutual fund investors have become fairly matured. In one line, if I have to summarize that maturity, Earlier when market used to correct, we used to go to tell them and convince them, stay invested, long-term India is good. Now when there is a correction, they come and tell us, don't worry, we are sending money, just clean out all the foreigners and long-term India is good. That's the change in Indian investors. Now the question is that, um, are we going to continue to see the kind of returns by and by, especially the end of the year has been um, very robust for equities, for equity returns in mutual funds. If I'm just talking about the equity portion of it. And we've seen a consistency in SIPs coming in. Investors at some point or the other are, are going to start seeing their returns and how the returns are constantly growing. Do you see this pace of growth continuing into 2024 as so well? The returns will be volatile. Hmm. Everything is good about mutual fund provided you can pass the Agni Pariksha. And once in a blue moon Agni Pariksha, everyone has to give. In March 20, my SIP returns for three years were negative. Five years SIP returns were lower than savings bank account. And 10 year SIP returns had halved to be less than bank fixed deposit return. But investors who pass through that Agni Pariksha, who took that pain of underperformance today, are looking at 15-20% compounded return for 15-20 years. So undoubtedly, there will be volatility and variation in SIP returns, mutual fund returns. There will be period when we'll have to go through Agni Pariksha. But if you pass through that, you will get a lot of money. You will get a lot of return. Do you think that Agni Pariksha is coming in this market after the kind of run-up we've seen? As of today, it looks very, very difficult. Indian markets are seeing earnings growth. A very well-known global investor told me, when I presented to him that India looks expensive on a one-year basis from a valuation point of view, he said, Nilesh Bhai, think long term. On a five-year basis, India is the cheapest emerging market. So there is earnings growth better than peers. Second, there is also governance. Our governance standards are better than probably most emerging markets. And finally, there is green transformation. India is the lowest per capita carbon emitter in the world. Where will you get combination of 3G, the growth, the governance and the green? So I don't see Agni Pariksha happening in the near to medium term future. But will India never see Agni Pariksha? Answer is no. There will be days when we'll have to go through Agni Pariksha, most probably for an external reason like COVID or like geopolitical risk, then internal reason. Okay. Uh 
Now, over the year, another trend that we've seen is the acute interest in small and mid-cap funds. And the kind of fund flows we've seen in these funds has been uh, multiple times more than in large cap funds. What do you think is the reason for that? Do you think it's a good choice for investors? And will that continue? Because you had also in July of this year, uh, some funds would stop taking lump sum amounts beyond a certain point. Is there a concern on froth building up? So a lot of money in small and mid cap fund is driven through SIP which comes at the top as well as bottom of the market. It's not just lump sum investment. Second, there are many investors who are booking profit on the direct holding of small and mid cap and putting into mutual funds, saying that mutual fund managers will be more professional in managing this exposure. So it's not that uh, all the money into small and mid cap is coming just looking at the past performance. Many are coming with eyes wide open. My feeling is that in Indian market today, there is combination of growth, governance and green. There is a pocket of exuberance where floating stock is limited. Mm. Ownership is controlled in few hands. They are reluctant sellers. And hence, even small buying is pushing prices higher and valuations becoming unreasonable. Bearing that portion of low floating stock uh, stocks, I think rest of the market is still fine. There will be undoubtedly ups and downs, but a patient investor, a disciplined investor will make money in our market. It has also increased the responsibility, wouldn't you say, of the fund manager in recent times because of the volume of money coming in and from all sections of society. The scrutiny has increased on where those investment decisions are being made. I'm speaking in the context of recent IPOs. Some have done very well, some, you know, a question for the amount of money mutual funds put in. Do you think that that scrutiny is welcome or does it put the fund manager on edge? That scrutiny is welcome. Tamanna, a large part of my investors are knowledgeable. They know what they are doing. But there is a significant part of my investors who are investing money based on our brand, our name, our reputation. We are managing their dreams. We are managing their aspirations. My mother was a widow and she, you know, worked for the outside world doing all kinds of part-time works to grow us, to make us, you know, eligible to participate in the world. There will be so many widows whose dreams I am managing. I have to be under constant scrutiny. I am accountable for them. And that scrutiny keeps us on our toes. That scrutiny brings us back to the ground saying that, it's not the rich people for whom we are managing money. It's also the people whose dreams, aspirations we are managing. So scrutiny is always welcome. It keeps us on the toes. It keeps us accountable. Having said that, uh, do you think there is also a requirement to be careful at a time when there is so much uh, excitement in the market? Uh, you know, a lifting tide raises all boats. Some of these companies may not deserve the valuations they're seeing. How will those decisions be made? And are you right now a little worried about some extent of froth building up? Undoubtedly, valuation is art. It's not a science. What things, what I believe is expensive might look cheaper to someone. What I believe is cheaper may look uh, value trap to someone. But as a professional fund manager, I have to ensure that I don't go and invest into unreal businesses. In 2000, there were many companies who just changed their name from XYZ Finance to XYZ Tech and fund managers bought into it. That mistake we can't allow. In 2000, I was told by an investor that Nilesh Bhai, don't make those mistakes which I can commit on my own. When I come to a professional, you should make some different mistake. I think that was a very, very valuable lesson for me. And wherever I have gone, I have ensured that we don't make the same mistake. We have to invest in real business. We have to back good promoters. We have to stay with management through ups and downs. And we have to communicate to the investors what we believe genuinely is the potential risk return trade-off. Just don't portray the return of small and mid cap and hope to collect money. We have to portray both risk and return together. Mm. You know, there was a circular recently also limiting the amount of returns that mutual funds 
can show and you have you have to peg them now uh, to the index so just taking forward the point about scrutiny and of course the, the mutual fund industry is now a caretaker of people's wealth and aspiration and, and i'm talking about as a whole um, how do you think these expectations can be managed and do you think that there is enough latitude to truly make those kind of returns for Indian investors? Do you think that ability and that potential exists in the market right now at these levels? So sunlight is the best disinfectant. Transparency is the best disinfectant. And mutual funds are the most transparent financial services in the entire country. Our expense ratios, our portfolios, our performance, everything is available at the tip of a you know click as long as we are transparent with investors they'll be able to take informed decision there's a set of mutual fund distributors which are taking mutual funds performance and risk return trade-off to investors so we believe we are in the business of managing trust and confidence of people transparency is the best way there are times when we have lost money for investors like in march 20 but people actually gave us more money to invest. Mm. There was a time when, you know, one fund stopped redemptions. Despite that, other funds didn't face pressure beyond a few days once we reached out to them. That trust, that confidence that even when chips are down, even when performance is bad, even when Agni Pariksha is going on, I can trust this fund manager, I can trust this fund house. I think that trust we have to maintain. And that's only possible through transparency. What do you think has been responsible for this switch in investor mindsets? Uh, because you're absolutely right. Uh, there was a time if markets had even a little bit of a dip, people used to start scrambling to redeem. Now they're scrambling to put in more money. What do you think is responsible for that switch? So a lot of credit should go to mutual fund distributor and advisor. They have handholded the customers and shown them how volatility does not really impact their long-term goals or long-term performance. Second, we as mutual fund industry, bearing few blemishes, have behaved quite responsibly. In fixed income in 2003-2004, when interest rates had bottomed out, we returned money in duration to investors by calling proactively. My fixed income fund was down about 90% from top because I went and advised investors not to invest in duration funds. I was not the only fixed income fund manager doing it. All my counterparts in other mutual funds did the same thing. I think over a period of time, we have been able to get the trust and confidence of investors. We have been able to showcase them that India is such a great growth story that every correction is an opportunity to buy. And March 20 was the real icing on the cake. Foreigners sold about 65,000 crore of equity and local investors just slept it up. Yeah. It got repeated in mid-21-22. They sold $35 billion of equity. Markets corrected about 10% and everything was absorbed. This has resulted to a fundamental shift in Indian risk premium. We were about 1.4 times emerging market peers in terms of beta or volatility. Now we are 0.6 times because our domestic investors' participation via mutual fund have built that base. So in segment one of this show, we talked about the macro picture, but we're going to take a very short break. When we come back, we will ask Nilesh ji what exactly you should do. What should be your strategy as a mutual fund investor? Stay tuned for that.
Welcome back. You're watching the Mutual Fund Show, and we have with us in studio today a very special guest, uh, Nilesh. Bhai, before the break, we talked about this sort of paradigm shift in the mindset of mutual fund investors in India, where they don't panic at every downtrend, and they in fact want to put in more money. Now, the question is, investors watching this um, may be wondering, what do you do when markets reach these kind of valuations? You generally do see a run up statistically before look. Sabha elections, the last six months, see some kind of a run up. Uh, is this a good time to put in fresh allocations apart from any SIPs that have been continuing, which are for a longer term perspective? Or would you advise people to wait? What would be your outlook on equity and debt kind of a breakup? So, whenever you have cash, that's the best time to invest. If you are an investor, it really doesn't matter whether you are investing today, tomorrow, or day after tomorrow. It's a long journey. I mean, imagine one day we'll be able to tell our kids that, look, when India's market cap was just $4 trillion, I invested. And today it is $40 trillion. We have got 10x return. It will be very unfair to go and tell your kids that, look, index was 20,500. And I was waiting for correction to come to 20,000 so that I can invest. And in the process, I ended up missing the bus. So whenever you have crash and whenever you have long term horizon, just blindly go and invest. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't focus on asset allocation. There are two ways to do asset allocation. One, give the responsibility to professional fund manager. Most of us run asset allocation fund for last 15, 20 years. They have delivered fantastic return to investors by dividing between debt, equity, and gold. That's one lump sum investment. Shut it. Forget it. The second is that you can do asset allocation on your own. At today's point of time, in fixed income, we'll recommend go for duration. Interest rates are picking out, and in one, one and a half years, they may start coming down. On equity, we'll recommend people to go long, large cap, and large and uh, larger mid caps rather than micro caps and mini caps or sectoral fund. So if you don't want to do asset allocation on your own, share the responsibility with fund managers through their asset allocation fund. And frankly speaking, now you have variety of asset allocation funds available. There's equity saving scheme, which is division between debt and equity. There's balance advantage fund, which is also between debt and equity. And then there is multi-asset allocation fund, which is between debt, equity, and gold. So you choose what is suitable to you. Mm. Um, you know, in terms of choice, and uh, I, I'm glad we're talking about this as well, the, the amount of or the array of choice is now dizzying for investors. And a lot of new players are also coming into the Indian market. Uh, a lot of uh, new funds are going to be available and not just from the established houses, but obviously uh, there's a beeline being made for Indian investors. What would be your advice to those trying to navigate this? Every second day there is a new fund with a new title. How do you actually sift through what is looking like a very promising title, whether it's whatever, it might be for growth, for your child's future, it could be labeled anything. How do you make sure it's something that is worth your money? So one, you know, Tamanna, whenever we go out for lunch, dinner, there are multiple choices of restaurants available. And within a restaurant, if you go, there are multiple cuisines available. How do we choose? In places where we don't have connect, we go by brand. We go by reference on Swiggy and Zomato. Uh, we go by hearsay and recommendation of friends. The same thing is applicable in mutual fund. Over here, you can rely upon a brand. Over here, you can rely upon a reference from a satisfied investor. And over here, you can rely upon your mutual fund distributor or advisor. The way of selecting your restaurant versus way of selecting your mutual fund remains the same. The reference, experience, brand, it's the same thing. So in terms of that reference, experience and brands, what do you think the expectations, expectations should be for investors? Because uh, they're going to be looking at uh, index returns. They're going to be looking at mid-cap index returns and expecting the same if not more, or thereabouts, from their fund returns. Do you think that's fair? So it will be extremely unfair. Hmm. 
as an investor, your first priority is to get alpha over or value over benchmark index. You will invest in a fund manager only if they are giving additional return over benchmark index. Now, it won't be possible every day, but over a cycle, over a period of time. Second, as an investor, it is your responsibility to ensure that the fund return and your return is similar. We have seen, on an average, an uh, investor's return is half of the fund's return because mm -hmm. they keep on jumping on what is better performing in the past. Yeah. Don't make that mistake. Stay invested for value add. Stay invested for long term so that fund return and your return could match. Just as we wind up this conversation, your outlook for where the markets are going to go. And uh, nowadays, it's in vogue to have a number in mind. You know, Sensex at 100,000. Uh, what, what are your numbers? Are there, are there any numbers that you want to talk about <laughs> for 2024? So as long as I can predict either the date or the index, I can't predict both. Okay. <laughs> Frankly speaking, there's no point in predicting what will happen to the market in one year. Time and again, we have seen forecasts going wrong. Mm. In January 20, I had no idea COVID will hammer the market like this. In Jan 21, I had no idea Russia, Ukraine will happen. So it's impossible to predict market. When you are investing in equity, don't take one year view. Take a view that India today is 3.7 3 trillion dollar economy. One day it will become 40 trillion dollar economy. India's market cap is today 4 trillion. One day it will become 40 trillion. I want to participate in this. Mm. Um, in that participation and in that very large picture, of course, what are the themes that you see working? We talked a bit, and I think you touched just a bit about how large cap funds are now looking interesting because they perhaps have not participated as much. Large caps have not participated maybe as much. Uh, are there some sectors and themes that you see persisting in this growth story? So two things will always work. One, quality. Second, valuation. What do I mean by quality? A business which generates more return on equity than cost of capital, which is run by minority shareholder friendly management, and which has some amount of moat, some amount of competitiveness. So by and large, good businesses one should buy. Second is valuation. Everything has a price. If I'm paying a reasonable price for a quality business, I think we have hit the jackpot. The rising tide of India will lift every boat. You have to ensure that you are not in a boat which has a hole of misgovernance in it. Mm. Any uh, final closing comments and advice for our viewers who are watching and who are wondering how to make the most of mutual funds? Remember, right now, a lot of people also want to dabble on their own in stock markets, in futures and options and maybe have a little bit of a sip going on the side. So what would be your advice to them and your strategy to them uh, you know, as we go forward? So my recommendation to investors is that there's no shortcut to success. Otherwise, all of us would have become billionaire. There are 18 crore Indians who have doubled in crypto to lose money. There are more than 2 crore Indians primarily in bottom of the half of society which have invested in Ponzi scheme to lose money. There are crores of Indian who, you know, do gaming, matka and all kinds of things to make money. Making money is like birbal ke khichdi, pakne mein time lagta hai. Be a long term investor, be a disciplined investor, be a regular investor. I can assure you that mutual funds will provide you financial security, will provide you financial freedom. You know, that's a faith a lot of uh, investors have shown in this, at least in 2023, and I'm sure it will continue because of the kind of returns and trust that the mutual fund industry is bringing forward. And of course, big names like yours. Thank you so much, Lej Pai, for speaking with us today on the show. Thank you.